You know, we don't talk much about Plus because it's one of our best-selling products in our history. Plus is a product that you take it and you feel great. And then when you stop taking it, you really notice the difference. So it's such a feel-good product that people very often don't even ask me what it is. They just say, I need it because I feel so good when I take it. Well, let me give you sort of a, an overview of, of what Plus is. This is about nourishing your glands more than anything else. And without your glands functioning correctly, you can't really maintain optimal health. The Plus is primarily a product designed to deliver plant sterols. And plant sterols are uh, certain substances that come from various plants. There are about 40 plant sterols currently identified. And one of the most important of these plant sterols is called beta cystosterol. Now, beta cystosterol is associated with a lot of different things in a lot of scientific studies. And the most common association with it uh, in the scientific studies outside of Manitech is associations with maintaining normal, healthy levels of cholesterol. Well, that's pretty important for everybody. Let's say that we want to nourish the adrenal glands. The adrenals are even working while we're asleep. So they don't get much rest. So these adrenals, they need lots of support. They need the vitamin, the mineral support, of course. But they also need the support from plant sterols. And beta cystosterol is very, very important in that area. Although all glands have certain vitamin mineral requirement, that's true. But just the vitamin and just the mineral, or even combined with various amino acids, is still not going to nourish the gland correctly and completely. That comes from plant sterols. We get so little plant sterol in our diet every day that it's hard to imagine that we can maintain proper glandular support. So this product, I like to see it as gland food. Well, the glands of the body are the tissues of the body that produce hormone. It's really important for everyone to note that PLUS is not providing hormone. So it isn't just when we say hormone, people think about reproductive hormones. Okay, well, yeah, sure. The reproductive system is really, really important. And what we want people to understand is that these plant sterols, again, are not human hormones. That's the first thing to understand. They say the words phytoestrogen, and they say, oh, this is a woman's product, because they're thinking estrogen. Well, men have estrogen too, and women have testosterone too. It's a balancing act. But secondly, by providing nourishment to tissues that can produce hormones in your body, so PLUS is not the hormone product, your body makes your own hormones. And the idea here is that you may have support for reproductive health, you may have support for various areas of glandular health. So we're talking about supporting your uh, female and male reproductive systems. Matter of fact, we have uh, claims on it for breast health, which is extremely important. And of course, uh, for men, for prostate health, because again, that's reproductive. But we also know that this combination of nutrients in PLUS can support uh, colon health, and it can support bone health as well. So these are all really important factors, great reasons to take this product every day. And when you're supporting your endocrine system correctly, that means you just think about all the functions of the different glands and all of the associated uh, sense of wellness that you get when all of those functions are functioning as designed from a well-nourished gland, producing the kinds of hormone that you should have every day.
moved over the last five years, and um, there's been lots of contributors to this presentation. Terry is sitting here, and Diane, I don't think she's here, and Pam, Alan Ewan, and Mariola have contributed. So it's been a, bit, a big journey of building this presentation over time. And it's always been a big passion of mine. Actually, I'll share with you a few of the sources of this presentation. There's a set of um, tapes, it's actually CDs now, you can get from Glycotools on the internet, The Hormone Revolution by um, Dr. Marcia Smith. I actually had it uh, playing in my car coming up here, and each time I hear what she has to say, it makes me even more passionate about the whole subject of hormones. And the other one, which I think you can get here today, is um, The Hormones from Heaven, and that's really, this call is called Hormones from Heaven originally. And I'll talk to you about the third book in a minute. So, when we talk about hormones, normally, before I knew all this information, um, I think that the first thought that comes is women, and the other thought that comes is it has only to do with the reproductive organs. And what's been interesting in learning about this whole journey about hormones is how much of our body, how many functions of our body are actually governed by our hormonal system. Functions that uh, our hormonal system governs, they're just some of the functions. If you can see mental alertness, metabolic rate, hunger, sex drive, happiness, sleep, fat metabolism, endurance. Sports people know about endurance. You know, when they take steroids to get their performance, we've heard a lot about it over the Olympics. That's because they know they can use steroids to um, manipulate their hormonal system and get better performance that way. Mood, I think most of us are aware, especially ladies are aware of the impact of hormones on our mood. Temperature and stress, and these are just some of the functions that our hormonal system is in charge of. Now, this is a diagram of the major um, glands, the endocrine system. The pituitary gland uh, we know of, the thyroid more and more we know of. It seems that normally we know of organs just when they go wrong. So the more people have trouble with thyroid, we get to hear more about the thyroid. We've got the thymus. We've got the adrenal glands also we're quite familiar because a lot of us in our society uh, suffer from adrenal exhaustion. The pancreas, which is the biggest gland that we actually have, and then we have our sex organs, the testes for the guys and the ovaries for the girls. Now, this is a chart explaining... Um, let me go one step back. The other thing that we may not know, it feels far from here, doesn't it? It's like you guys feel so far away, I need to come down to you. Um, one of the things that we may not know about hormones, and this talk, I hope you can take it out of this talk, is that our body can actually manufacture hormones from the building blocks that we actually give, okay? So the main two things that I'd like you to see in this chart is at the top of the chart, does this work? Hey, excellent. Phytosterols is actually what we have in our plus product. We have it in the sport product, and now we have it in the bounce back. And Phytosterols, together with essential, good essential fatty acids, good fats together, combine to be to the two major building blocks for the whole hormonal system. Okay, so I'd like you to take this out of this talk. And with these two building blocks, the, the body is able to manufacture and make the hormones that it needs. Okay? Sometimes nod, it just makes me feel better if you nod occasionally that you've heard me. Okay, great. Okay, so consider this. Every day, our body has different needs. One day, we need a certain level of DHEA. The other day, we need different levels of DHEA, and so on and so forth. And that's true for all the hormones, okay? So the beauty is that the body, taking the, using these building blocks, the phytostales and fats, is able to manufacture the correct amount of hormones we need every single day for use. Okay, so if you can remember this from the talk, it's very important. The other thing that may surprise you to see on this chart is actually cholesterol. Cholesterol has been given a lot of bad press, and we've kind of thrown the baby with the bathwater. There's a big distinction between the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol. And good cholesterol is actually something we need, especially for the production of our hormones. So the phytosterols with cholesterol form like a pool 
from which the body can choose to make the hormones that we need every single day. Now, I've jumped one with the being nervous here on the stage. I jumped one step there. Our hormones, basically the building blocks that we need to make this pool, are manufactured at night in our sleep. And if you remember in the initial st slide, there was sleep is one of the things that our hormonal function is in charge of. So getting good sleep is the first step to good hormonal health. Okay, because it can turn into a, v a vicious cycle. If you don't sleep well, you won't be making the hormones that you, put, you need the following day to actually put your bed, head to sleep. Okay, so first step, get the, get the sleep under control, and then we'll be able to make the hormones that we need for the following day. Okay, the other thing that I'd like you to think in terms of the hormone, uh, in the terms of the whole hormonal system, I like to think about it like a budget. Okay, you know budget? So say in the morning we wake up, we had a good night's sleep, hopefully. Maybe with the baby not so much, but hopefully we had a good night's sleep and we wake up in the morning with a budget of hormones. And that's supposed to last us for the rest of the day, that pool that the body is going to make the hormones from. Okay? Where was I? I forgot. Okay, the budget. Yeah, thanks. So... We have this budget in the morning, okay? Now, say we get stressed, and adrenaline is pretty high, is about there in the cascade. So say we get stressed, even just getting in the car in the morning, I hear from moms that just getting kids ready to school could be a stressful event, or in the city, if you get into the car and you get stressed just being late to work and so on. So here you go, use suddenly a lot of adrenaline. What happens is that if the building blocks, so your input of the phytostales, if it has not changed, if there's suddenly a big demand somewhere and the original, the building block hasn't changed, the rest is going to be compromised. There's going to be less to go around, okay? Like a budget, if the money at the beginning of a month, yeah, you have money to spend on food, on your fuel, on rent, on clothes, whatever. If the money has not changed and suddenly your car needs a new gearbox, which could be expensive, and your money here hasn't changed, you're going to have to compromise the less for that month until you get a new budget. You get the money for the next month. Okay? And it's exactly the same with our hormonal system. So things like uh, stress, literally, if you look at this chart, you can understand, if you can get that Adrenaline is pretty high here on the cascade, and which means that every time we get stressed, we produce a lot of adrenaline, which means there's less to go around for the other hormones, and it means that the body is going to start to compromise functions. So reducing stress in our life, anything that will do it, emotionally, physically, environment, any way that you can relax more is literally good for our health. It's not just a good idea, okay? The other thing that can be uh, detrimental and can be quite demanding on our hormonal system, a little bit lower down the chart here, is insulin. Okay, when do we excrete a lot of insulin? Sugar, that's right. I put in that category, I have to put wine and alcohol in that category because it's the same. Wine and alcohol is basically sugar. So when the body suddenly, we have a great chocolate cake, that's my favorite, have a big um, dose of high glycemic foods. That's where the high glycemic comes into play. If we have a food that is high glycemic, that means that the body needs to excrete all this insulin at once. And again, there's going to be less to go around. Are you happy with this concept? Okay. Good. You're nodding. Okay. Now, once we get to... Um... What's that? I missed a joke. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, when uh, we go into, um, when the body produces pregnenolone, it has the possibility to um, go down the DHEA path or down the progesterone path. And the 87 hormones that we're talking about here, 
And by the way, men have hormones too, and most of the hormones are actually similar between men and women. Both women, women also have testosterone. Men also have progesterone and estrogen. It's just the different amounts, okay? So all the information here today is relevant for men as well as women. That's really important to understand that, okay? So with these 87 hormones, they're actually manufactured in this cascade, one from another, from another, and so on. Now, at the top with pregnenolone, it can decide to go either down the DHEA path, which I'll talk about in a minute, or down the progesterone path. Okay? Now, by the way, not making any particular statement about whether taking cholesterol-lowering drugs is a good thing or not, but if you keep into, in your mind that cholesterol is needed for us to be able to manufacture our hormones, we need that pool, so as soon as we take a drug that lowers or minimizes that pool, it will have implications. The body will not have enough to make the hormones that it needs. Okay, so it's another thing to keep in mind. Okay, so let's go on to DHEA. DHEA has been given lots of loving names. Uh, one of them is the Fountain of Youth. Because if you can see in the chart there, we peak, the levels of DHEA peak around our 20s, 25. That's when we have in our life the highest levels of DHEA. It's been put in our bodies so we can have the energy and we can make babies and so on. Then, unfortunately, the steady decline. So really you can say that anything that we talk about aging is really that decline of DHEA. Okay? We, it declines between 3 to 5% a year. And for men, it declines faster. So one of the reasons that they say that women outlive men is because they generally, on average, women have higher levels of DHEA than men do. Okay? Now, also in a perfect world, all of our attempt to stay younger and avoid disease and stay healthier and so on, if we could have in a perfect world uh, what we want as far as anti-aging, if we could have that line of our 20s, a straight line, that's kind of your perfect scenario, although it may be a little bit too much energy. Maybe we won't be able to cope with that level of energy, but a slow slope. Okay, so DHEA, there's another 50 hormones that are made on the side of DHEA. I mentioned just a few, adrenaline and insulin, and if you remember, estrogen is on that side and testosterone is on that side. All these hormones are still made on, on the side of DHEA. Now, DHEA can be tested. It's just a blood test. You can go to the doctor if you like and ask for a DHEA test. It's just a good idea to have a snapshot, and I'll talk in a minute why it's a good idea, just to have a snapshot of where your health is at. Okay? We're very lucky in Australia because we get to have this test quite easily. They don't give you much trouble when you ask for it, so you can just go and have it checked. Now, the brain needs five to six times the levels of DHEA than the rest of the body. So you know how when people get a little bit older and so on, they start complaining that they're losing their memory or uh, the mental ability is not so sharp and so on? That has to do with the declinings of the levels of DHEA. When they've looked at, uh, they've, um, looked at Alzheimer's patients, they have about half the levels of DHEA of their peer group. Okay, so DHEA is so good for our brain function. And we know how so many people get on the product, get on the plus, and they start reporting, oh, my memory came back, I've got mental alertness, and so on. That has to do with the fact that there's been increased levels of DHEA. Okay, and I mentioned that DHEA gets depleted by stress, it gets depleted by using, uh, consuming high glycemic foods, and so on, and did I put coffee in the category of stress? Yeah. Coffee acts like stress, it's the same. So just keep in mind, all of those things take away from my youthfulness. How are we going? Good, you're absorbing, getting in, okay, okay. You need coffee, <laughs> sorry. You know what? It's not about me saying that you should or should, shouldn't have these things. It's just about having choices and knowing what the implications are of each one of our actions. Yeah? So you may find yourself that if, especially those that are already on the products, you may find that on a stressful day, now that you understand that stress depletes the hormonal system, you may choose to use more plus. 
okay, just to give that extra support. If you went to a party and you had a few glasses of wine or whatever, a big cake, whatever, you may want to give your body that extra support just to get over the hump and then you can go back to your good habits, which will be good to have. Okay, so one of the reasons that, um, one of the reasons that DHEA is so important and I'm suggesting to have a blood test, if you like, of DHEA is that it's been, it's been found to be a precursor to a lot of disease states, okay? So, most of the disease conditions, before the disease may have shown itself, you will find that the levels of DHEA are lower than normal, okay? So, so that's why it's a good reason uh, to have it. There's a study that we quote that went on for 22 years over with 5,000 women. It was a, a study about breast cancer, and what they checked is the biomarkers, the different biomarkers of their health, and what they found is that all the women that ended up presenting breast cancer symptoms, at some stage in their life, they had low levels of DHEA. And the reverse was also true. 100% of the women that did not have breast cancer had good levels of DHEA. Now, that deficiency could have been eight or nine years prior to them presenting the symptoms. We've all seen the iceberg. Yes, you can nod. The iceberg slide. That's the eight to nine years could be when it was working its way underneath the water, okay? So that's why DHEA is a good, it's a good indication. A smaller study, but still the same. It's important for men as well. They've been found that if men had good levels of DHEA, they were 50% less likely to have any cardiovascular disease, heart attack, and so on. Okay, nod. Thanks. That really helps here when you nod, I can tell you. Okay, so phytosterols, uh, as I said, is what we get in a plus in the sport and now in, uh, in the bounce back, is what it's the top of the cascade, okay? So it said phytosterols and essential fatty acid, and that's the building block for all of these hormones that we're talking about. Now, in societies that have been reporting really good health and um, don't even have words for hormonal problems and so on, they found that they consume between 50 to 80, 80 milligrams of these phytosterols a day. In some societies, even up to 200 milligrams a day. So you may have seen this before, but just have a guess how much we're getting in our average modern diet. Okay, so remember, just to put it back in perspective, we're talking about one of the two major building blocks for our whole hormonal system that is in charge of our memory, our mental ability, our mood, our happiness, our temperature regulation, our assimilation of nutrients, all of that, and we're getting less than 2% than we're supposed to. Okay? So that's a big deal, in my opinion. And no wonder we have so many hormonal issues. I was actually listening to the tape on the way here, and it's really conditions that just from our modern society, because our moms, our grandmothers, didn't suffer these conditions. You know, one of our recent ladies that joined and she started taking the products because of um, uh, menopause symptoms, she rang her mom to tell her about it, and her mom kind of didn't believe her, like, get over it, because she never had that in her generation. Okay, so it's really conditions that we've developed with our modern lifestyle. We've developed these modern lifestyle conditions that are coming up. Thanks for the nodding. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, PMS and menopause. Um, just briefly with women, I'm going to get to the men, so stay with me. But women produce the estrogen and the progesterone in the egg follicles as long as we're menstruating. Okay, and really the balance between these two hormones will determine whether we are angels or monsters in these two weeks of warning and during. Okay, normally the estrogen dominance, the normal PMS that women report has to do with an estrogen dominance. Okay, so just, that, just to keep it simple. Now, when a woman goes into menopause and she runs out of egg, we cannot produce these hormones the same way we used to and the body has to go into a backup system, okay? Because we have to have these hormones. It's not optional. We have to have them. We just need to find another way of getting them. And we're back to our fancy chart. 
So the backup system normally, generally speaking, and again it's generalizations, and I have to go back one step, everything that I'm sharing with you today is even just a snapshot of everything that can be said about the hormonal system, and hopefully it will inspire you to learn more and get these CDs if you want. You don't need that to build a business, but if you're interested, you can. Um, Because a lot of people get kind of kathunk moments in these presentations. I, I was actually, just another story, this information is so valuable. I was actually invited to speak in front of a very lucrative uh, health spa down in New South Wales. People spend thousands of dollars going on that health spa. And when I gave, my, when I gave the DHEA story, there was one lady that at the end of the talk, she was like, thank God I came to this week just to hear this talk. And not only that, she says, my DHEA levels are shocking. They're under the minimum. They've been that way for a very long time. I've been sick for so long, and nobody would give me this information. Nobody told me about this link. So that's just the value of what we actually have to offer. So back to... um, So with a backup system, normally estrogen is a bit easier, especially for us if we have a little bit of extra in menopause. It's good. That's the extra fat that the body can actually use to make the estrogen. With the progesterone, however, it's a bit more tricky. Okay? Can you see this line that goes from the pregnenolone to progesterone? Okay, great. So just look at it in another minute because it's going to change. See what happened to the squiggly line? What that means is that the backup system for progesterone is it can be made from DHEA, okay? Because we said that the body can make hormones from another hormone depending on our need, okay? However, remember the trouble we had with DHEA even before that extra load? Declining 3 to 5% a year, all of those, we're not getting the building blocks. Instead of 50 to 80 milligram, we're getting 1 to 3 milligram and so on. So here a woman hits menopause and all that extra load of 20 or extra 30 hormones have to be made from DHEA. No wonder so much trouble starts at that stage because suddenly there's that extra load. Okay, now, osteoporosis. You with me still? Okay, stay with me on this one because when I heard this, Again, it was, for me, a big kathunk moment. We agreed with Nerissa that we're made out of cells, okay? Including our bones, right. Estrogen's job is to maintain bone cells, okay? Cells also have a lifespan, right? They get born and then they die and they get replaced and so on. So, estrogen's job is to maintain bone cells. Progesterone's job is to make new bone cells. So if we have an imbalance of too much estrogen and not enough progesterone, what is going to happen to our bones? We're going to get holes in them. It's just a fancy word of say. Osteoporosis is a fancy name of a bone with big holes. Okay? So, and men, you are not immune to this condition, actually it's a, growing, it's a growing trouble for men as well. And in 20 years, men and women are going to suffer the same level of osteoporosis. We still have in our mind that it's just a women's thing, but no, men are catching up quite nicely. Now, as far as calcium goes, I mean, we're making a few strong statements here. With calcium, you've noticed my funny accent? That's because I come from Israel. In Israel, we consume huge amount of dairy products. I could say that roughly when you walk into a supermarket, probably a third or of the supermarket will be dairy products, a little bit like French people, lots of dairy products. And do you think we don't have a problem with osteoporosis there? It's out the roof because it's not, it's not a problem of not enough calcium. It's what the body can do hormonally and whether it has the hormones to actually make the new bone cells, okay? Now, as far as, as far as calcium supplement goes, again, it's not anything against taking calcium supplements. It's just making sure that the ones that we choose to take can actually get assimilated properly. Because the normal ones that normally the doctors prescribe, if you remember when Steve Nugent was here, was sharing that we can only, studies have shown that we only absorb between 4 to 6% of what is given. So all the rest is just stays as calcified deposits. 
and the body cannot deal with getting rid of so much of these deposits. And there's even research showing that some tumors start getting built around these deposits. I was giving this talk yesterday, and one woman said it's a little bit like a pearl. And it's true, it's exactly like a pearl. The calcified deposit is in the middle, and then the tumor gets built around that. Okay, so hormonal health probably has to do with bone density more than the calcium has to do. It's not that you don't need, just make sure that the ones, I mean, we're on ones that are absorbed really well, so that's a good thing. Now, older women, a few statistics why um, bone health is so important. I should have had a marker here. Okay, there's one up already there. Okay, here we go. I'll tell you about this pic in a minute. About 20% of senior citizens who suffer a hip fracture die within a year of that fracture. About 20% of individuals with a hip fracture end up in a nursing home within a year. So is it important to look after our bone health? I think after 40 is a good idea to have a scan. With bones, because they regenerate so slowly, once a year is plenty, once every two years is good enough because less than that, there's not enough time for the bones to make any, um, any change. Okay, you still awake out there? Hey, great. Okay, here's a slide that literally shows a healthy bone and a bone with the holes. You, it's quite obvious, isn't it? Now, there's another, another thing we got used to which is actually not true. In our society, we come to, there's this acceptance that as we grow older, our bones get thinner. No, actually, it's not supposed to be this way. You know, thousands of years ago, they've actually found bones of, of humans that the older they were, the denser their bones actually were. So the fact that our bones are getting thinner, it's actually a modern day thing self-inflicted again as a result of everything that we've spoken here today. Okay, so for the guys I've mentioned already, um, in 20 years you'll be suffering from osteoporosis as much as women. It affects one in every three um, men over 60 will have a fracture. 30% of 65-year-old men have a lower than normal testosterone levels. And again, for, for men, the lack of testosterone is what leads to the bone density. So for women, it's the lack of progesterone, and for men, it's the lack of testosterone. Okay? And if there's quite a strong statement there, the risk of fracture for men is greater than the risk of prostate cancer. And prostate cancer is the number one ailment in Australia. Okay, so strong bones are important. Have it. Okay, just a word about prostate issues because a lot of uh, men suffer from that, and the percentage grows up. Thirty percent of thirty-year-old will suffer problems with prostate. By the time we get to eighty-year-old, a hundred percent of people of men will pro suffer prostate um, problems. And what it is. We've got the urethra, and we've got the prostate sitting around it. It's supposed to be there to make semen? Yeah. Okay. Now, when it gets enlarged, it can go up to a, a size of a fist when it gets enlarged. And when it gets enlarged, it restricts the tube, basically. So that's why men have trouble when they have issues with prostate, have trouble with urination, because physically it constricts. And the... It's only when there's a lot of pressure in the bladder that it can actually push through that constriction. And if that condition stays for a long time, there's a huge percentage often that it actually turns into prostate cancer. Okay, so that's the story of, um, of the prostate. And prostate cancer, as you see, it's the most commonly malignancy um, in, diagnosed in Australia, and 75% of all prostate cancer could be prevented by dietary and lifestyle changes. That's from a study that's been done in New York, 75%. Okay, so we've got a lot of work to do, guys. Um, a quick word about HRT. Again, it was interesting. I was listening to these um, CDs on the way, and Dr. Marcia Smith made a really interesting comment. You know, when we come and talk to people about nutritional products, um, 
we get hit by you don't have double blind placebo tests to justify and so on and so on, which now we have with Bansbeck and we have with a few others. But really, we, you know, the nutritional side and the natural side gets knocked down a lot for not enough evidence. And she claims that a lot of what is actually being practiced around hormonal replacement therapy also doesn't have double blind placebo tests. They don't have the sound scientific foundation that they claim to have. And if I want to take you one step back, which is really the message of this whole talk, if we give the building blocks, I mean, we have an amazing body. He did a good job, right? Perfect body. So if we give the body the building blocks, it will know what to do with it, as opposed to man-made idea that is kind of half notion that every few years the idea changed. First they thought, oh, women that, are, that have a risk of heart disease, they should take more estrogen. Then they found out, no, it doesn't make any difference. Then they found, no, actually, maybe it gives them a, a, more risk of uh, heart disease. So let's change that idea. So with HRT now, just the bottom line is that the World Health Organization has declared HRT as carcinogenic, okay, together with a contraceptive pill. So any interference, there's been a study, just quoting one because there's tons of these studies. Uh, women were put for five years on a study on, on HRT, and they were asked after three years to get off the study because the incidences of of stroke and cancer and so on were so much greater that they said the risk of taking it outweighs the benefit of, that you can get from it. Five minutes, better move on. Okay, now we're doing well actually. So back to really the message of this talk, we can give the phytosterols and the essential fatty acids I talk in a minute and give the body the building blocks to know exactly what to make every day what we need rather than interfering. And, you know, the hormonal system runs on a feedback loop. As soon as you interfere in the middle, whether it's a DHEA supplement, I haven't even gone to the stage of the synthetic versus the natural, any interference, progesterone, cream, you name it, you've interfered in a system that works on a feedback loop. In her words, you get a wacky hormonal system because it goes out of sync and then it can't function the way it's supposed to function. So that's where trouble starts. So the best is to give the body the building block that it needs and give the intelligence for the body to do what it's supposed to do. Okay, that's the plus product. It, um, and part of the relief of menstrual pain is actually on the claimed, um, the claims we're allowed to say. And it's a hormonal modulator, really important, whether people suffer from overactive hormonal system or underactive hormonal system, it's appropriate. The one thing, as I kept talking about essential fatty acids, is the one thing we don't make, but we highly recommend because they really work hand in hand. The plus does work better. You, some of you may have had the experience that you had really great results on the products and suddenly the fish oil ran out and you're not getting such good results. Or vice versa, maybe you're not getting the results you want because you haven't added the fish oil yet. I would suggest to take fish oil every time you take plus. Actually, literally take them together so you increase the ability um, of it to work. Mostly we need to really supplement uh, omega-6 because we have actually plenty of... Uh, sorry. Mostly we need to supplement the omega-3 because we have a lot of omega-6 out there. And you want to, if you're going to take it from a fish source, you want to make sure that it's molecularly distilled because that means that they've taken the, um, the heavy metals out, okay? Because you don't want to do one good thing, getting the fish oil and getting all the heavy toxic metals into your system, which will be detrimental to our health. Oh, my God, running out of time. Okay, this book is done by Dr. Gil Cates, has been written. It's a study of people that have been on our products, Manatech Associates, like you and I, that have taken the products over 14 years, and these are the results that he came up with. As it's called Restructuring Body Composition. You can have a look. 
we can't get it, I think, yet in Australia. I wish we would. You may need to order it from the States. We had to go to the, his hotel room to actually get it when we were in Manifest. It was hot off the press. Just to give you a snippet of what uh, you can expect, as far as bone density, you know how we all agree that doing weights is good for our bone density? That's, yeah, we agree on that. There's no... So the yellow one is people. People have done different methods to improve their bone density. The yellow one is people that went to fitness club and did weights. The orange one is people that took our products. Three and, three and a half times better than people that went and did weights. I'm not saying don't do weights. Do both. Excellent. Okay? But this is the power of our products, and it's documented by a third party that has... All this guy does for 30 years is test different nutritional supplements, including all of our competitors, and he loves working with us because our products not only do what we say they do, it does, they do so much more than we say it does. So this is a list of, uh, he summarized the benefits. So we're looking at improved bone density. We're looking at redu re reduced uh, body fat, increased muscle mass, healthy levels of cholesterol in the body, improved quality of life, and improved immune system. These are just some of the results from this book. I'm finishing. It's my last slide. So I reckon, I mean, I think you can agree, we have one body this ride. And we look after our cars. We look after our houses. We look after so many other things better than we look after our own health. And if I can encourage you, it's not even just about these products. It's everything that we can do. We can improve our diet. We can exercise more. We can relax more. Whatever you feel that is going to improve your health. And one of the statements I really liked that was made by one of the speakers a couple or three visions ago when they were explaining the optimal health products. You know, the optimal health products will really take our body to the best, to the optimal level that we have under the certain the current circumstances, okay? So if you go and do something good for your body, give up sugar, the whole level is going to increase, yeah? So you can always get a better level. It's not that you take these products and you're limited by the improvements you can get. Go and do other things that are going to improve your health. So I'm for everything that works. Water, green veggies, cleansers, exercise, you name it, good relationships, the whole thing, because we only have one body. And you know what? When something goes wrong, as some of you know, it's not so really unpleasant, but it's so expensive. It's, we forget. People complain about how expensive these products are, but try having something wrong with your body. Okay, thank you.